the uh, attacks on Justice Thomas are relevant, I mean, today and every day, but they've popped up again. And one of, I think, the most racist Americans we have is Ellie Mistal, who writes for The Nation. He's on Joy Reid's program almost every night and just says the most racist things about whites and about conservative blacks. I mean, it's just, it's crazy the stuff this guy gets away with. But his latest rant was on Joy Reid. He's very, very angry because this leftist group did a deep dive into the number of, quote, gifts that Justice Thomas has accepted while he's been on the high court. And while they do acknowledge that many other justices, including leftist justices, have also received multiple gifts, they said, well, he's received more. His, if you count the private jet travel, seem to amount to more. Well, once you've accepted that they can take gifts, you're done, right? Like it's, if it's two million, if it's half a million, it's up to the Supreme Court to determine. And we've had whole Senate judicial confirmation hearings of these folks to figure out whether they're ethical and belong on this court and we're gonna trust them or not. It's up to them to decide. Anyway, here is Ellie Mustel going off on this report with Joy Reid. Take a listen to SOT4. I think it's important for people to ask, what are these people paying for, right? Yeah. What are they getting for their $4 million they've given to Clarence Thomas over the past 20 years? What they're <laughs> getting is what Byron Donalds wants. What they're getting is Jim Crow, right? What they're getting is a guy like Clarence Thomas who, like Byron Donalds, entire judicial philosophy is that, well, there, some Negroes are magic, right? And no matter what the white man does to us, we can just rise above as long as they don't shoot us or kill us or rape us or drown us, right? And if you tell people that, if you're black, if you're Donald's, if you're Thomas, and you tell white people that, they will give you money. And mm-hmm. that is what's happened to Clarence Thomas for 20 years. Wow, your reaction to him. That turns my stomach, but um, you know, it, it's par for the chorus. Uh, I mean, I don't even know where to begin. Clarence Thomas is motivated by money. That, that that's laughable. I, the Clarence Thomas's judicial philosophy has been many decades in the development. He has a long track record of intellectual contributions to the evolution of American law. You can disagree with Clarence Thomas's jurisprudence, but calling him a name, calling him an, in effect an Uncle Tom, a grifter and a sellout. Uh, that's, uh, as I say, uh, desperation. Uh, I think this uh, lapsing into uh, the a sample talk uh, in, in reference to uh, one ninth of one third of the American government. And as I say, an African-American whose accomplishments in his life illustrate the triumph of black people over uh, Jim Crow and uh, racism and so on. So... You know, I, I mean, I'm not surprised, and that does resonate in uh, Joy Reid's audience. Oh, by the way, I looked her up. She's getting paid a million and a half dollars a year to spew her bile at MSNBC, and she's got the nerve to call somebody a grifter. So You're exactly uh, right, Glenn. She and by yeah. the way, to your point about Thomas, if Thomas was actually, if he were interested in money, he'd be making. Nine, ten million dollars a year at any Easily. white shoe law firm in America. Easily. That's right. So, I mean, it's just insulting. I will, before I, I want to get back to the book, but quick comment on Byron Donalds. And the reason they were saying Thomas is just like Byron Donalds is that Byron Donalds was in the news this week making a comment about life for black Americans. Pre, you know, during Jim Crow, yes, but he was talking about pre Great Society America and what life was like. Here's what he, I'm going to play the longer clip of what he said, and we'll talk about how they're bastardizing it and him. Uh, let's play okay. SOT 6. Growing up, the one thing I knew I wanted to do, and this is not about my father, this is about what I wanted to do, is I wanted to be a father to myself. Wow. Uh, and so one of the things that's actually happening in our culture, which you're now starting to see in our politics, is the, re- in, the reinvigoration of black families with younger black men and black women. And that is also helping to breed the revival of a black middle class in America. You see, during Jim Crow, during Jim Crow, the black family was together. During Jim Crow, 
more black people were not just conservative, because black people always have been conservative minded, but more black people voted conservatively. And then H-E-W, Lyndon Johnson, and then you go down that road, and now we are where we are. What's happened in America the last 10 years, and I say it because it's my contemporaries, it's Wesley's contemporaries. You're starting to see more black people be married in homes, raising kids. Glenn, what do you make of it? So to me, I hear that, and I'm like, yeah, that's, I mean, read some is Shelby Steele. Like, yes, this has been, this is not a new thought or observation. It's not. Uh, and the attack on him is that he said, during Jim Crow, the black family was healthier, as if there was something good about Jim Crow. <laughs> he, he wasn't extolling the benefits of Jim Crow. He right. was pointing out the, the collapse of the African-American family, which has occurred uh, uh, in the post-Jim Crow era. Uh, and I mean, he was just making a statement of fact. I mean, when uh, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, the late uh, senator from New York, who working for the Lyndon Johnson administration in 1965, issued a report on the black family, he was alarmed at the collapse of the black family. And he was pointing at 25 percent of the babies born to a black woman being born to a woman without a husband. That number is 70 percent today. Seven zero. Moynihan was writing in 1965 at the end of Jim Crow, things have gotten worse. That's simply a statement of fact. People are putting their head in the sand to the extent that they ignore what is sociologically obvious, which is that it's a devastating indictment of a community and inhibition of that community's ability to reproduce productively itself from generation to generation for the family to have collapsed, the nuclear family, husband, wife, mother, father, raising children. This is a good thing, not a bad thing. It's time tested through history. And what has happened to the African-American society in that respect is unhealthy and is something to be lamented, in my opinion. And I, I think, again, that that's a demonstrable uh, statement about the, how societies reproduce themselves. The family well, is, is key. And he was just pointing out that the uh, the collapse of the family is a post-Jim Crow phenomenon amongst African-Americans, and that's true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is another reason why I love the admissions and late admissions, <laughs> your book, because you're not speaking about this from some high perch. Like, I've made better choices than all of you, and now I will lecture to you about how you can be a better person like me. You're actually laying it bare on how you did not always make the best choices. And things didn't work out that great in the personal lane for you at every chapter. Um, I mean, you've been incredibly academically successful and professionally successful, but you, you're open about the pain that you've caused in making other decisions. Do you owe back taxes? Pandemic relief is now over. Along with hiring thousands of new agents and field officers, the IRS has kicked off 2024 by sending over 5 million pay-up letters to those who have unfiled tax returns or balances owed. Don't waive your rights and speak with them on your own. Tax Network USA, a trusted tax relief firm, has saved over $1 billion in back taxes for their clients, and they can help you secure the best deal possible. Whether you owe 10 grand or 10 million, they can help you. Whether it's business or personal taxes, even if you have the means to pay, or if you're on a fixed income, they can help finally resolve your tax burdens once and for all. Call 1-800-245-6000 for a private free consultation or visit tnusa.com slash Megan. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.